Today I'm going to show you how you can track airplanes with just a cheap Raspberry Pi and a USB dongle. Now you can see I got a, quite a few planes on here. I'm using the default dongle that comes with the package on Amazon. And this is only like $25 in total for the, the USB dongle and the antenna. Now you can see quite a few planes are picked up. This is actually just sitting in my window right now. So, getting pretty good range on here. You can get up to 100 miles, 150 miles with just the basic antenna. Now, if you want to pay more money, you can get a more expensive one, put it on your roof, and you'll get even further. You can get like 200 miles or 300 miles, something like that. So, it's pretty cool. The first thing you'll need is a ADSB receiver dongle kit. Now, these are only about $27. I've got this one. It looks like the price went up a little bit, $32, but it's still not that bad. You get a USB dongle and a cheap antenna that actually works decently well. You can pick up planes from about 100 miles away. And you also get a dongle if you have another antenna. I, I don't think I received a remote. I don't, you don't really need a remote. You just need the antenna and the dongle. Now the last thing you'll need is a Raspberry Pi board. You could probably do this on a computer, but I wouldn't recommend it. Like a full computer. You want this to be pretty portable. You could just leave it anywhere and it'll pick up airplanes. Now these can be 45 bucks. You don't need a Pi 4, but it's nice to have the more high performance boards. Click build a new Piware receiver and there's some instructions here. You can just go down and find install Pyware on your SD card. Now here's the image right here. Click that and you can download the image. This will take a few minutes depending on how fast your internet is. Alright, once it's done you can go ahead and extract the files in here. You'll just need the .image file. That's all you need. Just extract it into a random directory, it doesn't really matter. And you'll be good. Alright, we just need the image file, just copy and paste it and it'll take a few seconds. Now we're gonna need another program. Now this program is called Belena Etcher. Just download it. Keep it, it's not a virus. And then once it's done, set it up. Alright, we're done already. Now next, you wanna find your Pyware SD card image. And you can probably just drag it in here. Yep select target you're gonna want do not pick a large drive because that's gonna be your hard drive you do not want to overwrite your hard drives now 63 gigs that is my SD card right here flash reader select it and then you can flash just don't click anything over here it's not needed at all and it's flashing this is gonna take a few minutes all right, Blana Etcher is now finished formatting our SD card and flashing it. Now do not click format disk or you're gonna have to start the process over again. Just click cancel. Oh, yeah, I forgot just one thing. You wanna go find your USB SD card reader and open up the boot partition. And then you're gonna find pyawareconfig.txt, open it up. And this is only if you're using Wi-Fi, but if you're using wired network, you don't need to do this. But if you're using Wi-Fi, come here to Wireless Network, make sure it's yes, and then come down to Wireless SSID. That's going to be the name of your Wi-Fi network, and then password is the password of your Wi-Fi network. Just make sure this is correct here, or you're going to have to start all over. You shouldn't have to change anything else. Then create a new file on the SD card. Make sure it doesn't have any file extension, just call it SSH. Enter, yes, and you have SSH access. Now what we want to do is head over to our Raspberry Pi and install the SD card. Alright, now we have to put the SD card in the Raspberry Pi. Now I've already put it in there. Make sure the SD card is facing up. Once that's done, find your dongle. Now dongle, pretty easy to install the antenna. I've already done it. I don't I don't feel like doing it again. There it is. Just push it in there and plug it into your Raspberry Pi.
All right, if you have USB 3.0, I recommend using your, your USB 3.0 port. It probably doesn't make a big difference, but it might make some sort of difference. All right, now you're good to go. You can plug it in. I have my antenna put in my window right now. It works decently well, but I recommend putting it on your roof if you can. I'll plug it in. Now it should be booting up. You do not have to plug it into HDMI or a keyboard. It's pretty simple. You can just go on the internet, find claim your Pyware client on flightaware.com and claim it. Now you're going to have to create an account. It's free, so it's not that big of a deal. And then just sign up. All right, once you create an account, it should automatically link your Pyware receiver. I've censored some information, so you can't find where I live. But once it's linked, you're pretty much good to go. You can head over to My ADSB and click Stats. And your new receiver should be coming up here. Now, if you see right here, Local IP, this is where you can find your receiver. Copy that and and paste it up here. So you'll find Pyware status and you can head over to the Skyware map. Now this will show you where all the airplanes are near you. You see it's, pr it's pretty late so there's not that many right now. Okay, once you're done with this, head back to your feeder statistics page and then go to settings and then precision on coverage map don't put exact or unless you want your exact location shown on their maps just do one kilometer ten kilometers receiver location manually enter location alright configure location now this is where you have to select where your house is and you want it to be pretty damn accurate I'm not going to show you where my house is obviously but just click on just move this just move this dot to the exact location of your antenna I'm not sure why it's doing that but yeah once you move it to the exact location add your height of your house height above ground level I'll just do 20 feet submit and your house should be on here. Once you have those two things added, you should be good. Close it out and refresh. Well, head over to Skyware. Refresh and MLAT is in initializing. So MLAT is enabled and you're good to go. You are now contributing to FlightAware. There are multiple other flight applications you can contribute to and you can continue watching if you'd like to contribute to them otherwise if you're fine with just contributing to this one right here, FlightAware, then you can stop the video. To ADSB Exchange, this is a smaller flight data website. They don't censor military and private aircraft. So it's an open source flight website. It's smaller than Flight Radar 24 and smaller than Flight Aware, but it's pretty open source and good, so I recommend sharing data to this one as well. It'll keep sharing data with Flight Aware, but you'll also be sharing here. Now all you gotta do is install the feed client, is open command prompt, and then t type in ssh pi at local IP. You can find this on your PyAware site. And just do yes. And then password. The password is FlightAware. And then once you're in, you'll be able to copy and paste these commands. Copy this one. And then copy this one. Oops. Copy it once. Now what this does is installs the ADSB Exchange client, which will allow you to upload data to their website as well. All right, once you get to the setup screen, just hit enter. All right, unique name. This will be the name that shows up on their MLAT map, which it doesn't matter what the name is, just whatever. 
Now you'll need the precise location, which they give you a link right here to find locations. Now you'll want to click on your address. I'll just click a random one. Let's go right there. And then you'll get this information right here. Now, once you get back to your SSH, hit OK. And then for latitude, copy the first latitude number, location 42.74217. And then longitude, it's this number right here, negative 102.67822. And then for altitude, it'll show up right here, 3991.4. You don't need the decimal. Oh, you need to add feet to the end of it. 3991 feet. And then hit yes to proceed. All right, it's done. Now you'll be contributing data to ADSB Exchange. Just copy this command. It'll be in the description. Copy and paste into SSH. Enter. All right, once you get to the screen, it'll ask you some questions. Make sure it's connected to the computer or accessible over network. I already have it connected to Wi-Fi. Number two, you know the longitude and latitude. We already found that for ADSB Exchange. Email address and service is stopped. It should be stopped already. We'll just use our temp mail. If you used to feed FR24 into your sharing key, just leave it empty. And then MLAT calculations do no. I'm not sure why they don't let you do MLAT if you're already do using it for other services, but just do no. They ask you to do no. Airport code, just leave it empty. Now, latitude, copy these from the other website we were just at. Elevation finder, just copy it from here. Latitude, 42.74217. Longitude, negative 102.67822 altitude above sea level 3991 and then would you like to continue using these settings hit yes now just hit yes desired log file just do zero and the installation is complete all you got to do is run sudo systemctl start fr24 feed and your pyware will now be contributing to flight radar 24 Thank you for watching this tutorial. Once you're finished with this, you'll be able to get Enterprise User on FlightAware and Business User on FlightRadar24.